So welcome to those of you who are joining me and um, yeah, I hope that you have uh, found useful if you've been watching over the past couple of nights, um, the content that I've been delivering. And today is part three, it's a wrap up. Um, and so we are gonna go through how to create that vision for 2020 and how to bring it to life. Um, so what have we covered so far? Let's do a little bit of a recap. So we've looked at how to review your 2019 and in fact, all the way back to 2010. So how to review the past decade. Um, we have also then looked at what are the things that you spotted, like the themes, recurring themes, patterns, um, resolutions that you set every year that you just never seem to keep. Um, and looking at what do you really want to change going forward into 2020. Um, and then yesterday we started to look at some of the mindset shifts that you will need. So you need to be living, recognize that you're always living at cause in your life and the, the effects that you experience in your life are as a result of um, what you put in basically. Um, and then the other thing was to make sure that you're setting goals that are intrinsically motivated rather than extrinsically motivated. So they are motivated from a place of wanting to um, improve yourself, um, wanting to do something because it's going to bring value to you rather than wanting to do something because somebody else outside of you um, kind of it, it's you believes that someone else outside of you is going to have an opinion on it, um, will love you more, will like you better. Um, will admire you more, whatever it might be. So um, hopefully you've made notes on all of that if you've been watching. Um, if not, you can go back and watch the, the previous two replays. Um, so this evening, what we are gonna cover um, is how to create that vision, yeah, and how to bring it to life. And then I'm also gonna open up an offer for people to work with me in 2020 on getting greater clarity, whether that be in life or in your career. So let's get started. Again, I have notes with me so I don't forget anything. Um, and so going forward and creating your vision, we looked, when we looked at the previous 10 years, what we did is we looked at it by area. So work, home, love, health and wealth and anything else that you wanted to look at. And so I would suggest going forward that if you're going to be setting goals and resolutions that they fall into those same areas or they fall into areas that you, um, that you have defined um, so that you're not just setting you know, one massive goal. You may only have one goal for the next year, which is fine. Um, but if you want to, to separate it out into different areas of life, that can sometimes give us some clarity about the goals that we're setting. So, um, yeah, what are your goals ultimately for the next, um, yeah, the next however long um, year? I would say for myself, I find it quite difficult to plan that much further ahead than one year. Um, in fact, I'm going to break my, my goals down into 90 day chunks. Um, I'm probably going to have a three year plan in some areas, but only some. In others, I'm going to just go with the flow and see where my goals take me. So um, yeah, how far ahead do you want to be looking when it comes to your goals? I would suggest that we, we look mostly at only mapping out um, 2020. Um, and not mapping all the way out to 2030, because who knows, who knows where any of us will be um, in 2030. Um, <clears throat> so one of the important things to, to do when we're looking at goals is to make sure that they are aligned goals. And we've talked about this a bit earlier in a couple of the previous workshops. So are your goals aligned with your true self and what you truly desire? Um, let me just have a quick check here. I don't know if we're making it onto Facebook. I don't know, it doesn't seem to be doing anything. Okay, um, <clears throat> so yeah, making sure that your goals are truly aligned is really, really key. Um, and that, that requires you to know who you are and to know what you want and to be really clear that you're doing things that are intrinsically motivated rather than extrinsically motivated. Um, so think about what you really want when you're looking at setting goals. What's gonna bring value to your life? What is gonna bring you 
happiness, joy, whatever it might be that you are seeking. And that brings me on to the next part, which is looking at how you actually want to feel. So when we set goals, traditionally, especially if we're in a corporate um, way of thinking, we really tend to look at what do I want to achieve? Um, and we look at achievement and it's, it's often something that is defined by society or the corporation that we're in or the circle of people that we mix in it's not really defined by who we truly are and how we want to feel and this is the key thing when we're setting a goal is that ultimately whenever we set a goal it's because we want to feel a certain way and so how is it that you want to feel now if you want to dive deeper into this i would suggest looking at the work of danielle laporte she is an amazing amazing She's not really a coach, she's a thinker um, and a writer. Um, and she has something called the desire map, which is all about thinking about how do I want to feel in my day-to-day -day life? And if you think about any goals that you set in the past, there was a feeling behind them. You might say, yeah, I wanted to achieve that because it would bring me X, Y, Z. Yeah, but why did you want to be brought X, Y, Z? Well, because it would make me feel a certain way. So this is an invitation to really get into and think about and get clear on how do I feel? How do I want to feel in my everyday life? Sorry, I'm just checking. Facebook is not working, but never mind. Um, so yeah, how do you want to feel? And then once you've really got clear or maybe you can break it down into those areas of life again, how do you want to feel in your work? Well, how do you want to feel at home? How do you want to feel in love? How do you want to feel in your health? How do you want to feel as regards to your wealth? And once you're clear on those feelings, if you've already set goals, you might need to go back and have another look at them because it might be that you've been setting arbitrary goals. And really, when you look at them, you think that is not going to bring me the feeling that I actually want in that particular area of my life. So what will bring me that feeling or what do you think will bring me that feeling? Because if you've never done it before, you've never been there before it's going to be a little bit of trial and error. And this is why I think doing like 90 day reviews is actually quite helpful because it enables us to, to go and look at our goals and say, is, is that really the goal that I wanted to set? And also have a look at, I've been doing these things because I thought that it was going to bring me closer to that goal or closer to that feeling, but actually it's not working that way. So what can I do to, um, yeah, to generate that feeling? And maybe you need to revisit your goal completely after 90 days so have a think about are your goals aligned with who you truly are and how you want your life to be and how are you how do you want to feel and are your, are your goals aligned with that and are they going to lead you to that feeling um and the other thing i want to share about goals as well is that actually setting a goal is like the smallest piece of the pie it is nice it gives us a direction um, it gives us something to aim towards, but ultimately setting a big goal is not, is not going to change a damn thing in our lives unless we also have process goals. So what I mean by process goals are the daily small things that you do every single day of your life um, that are either going to lead you towards achieving that goal or away from achieving that goal. And this comes into something else I want to talk about, which is choices and consequences. So every single choice that we make has a consequence. And this is where process goals are really important because every single minute choice that we make in our lives ultimately has some sort of consequence. So I think I gave the example yesterday maybe of me um, knowing that if I eat chocolate or at least any large, not even a large amount, a medium sized amount of chocolate, after about midday, my sleep is going to be affected. And so if I say that my goal is, say, um, becoming super fit, and I know that based on the, the time that I have and the life that I'm living right now, that I need to crack out four workouts in a week, and they've got to be done really first thing in the morning, because otherwise things happen and they just don't get done. And so then if I decide that I'm going to eat that chocolate at 5 p.m., 6 p.m., and I know that I need to get a decent amount of sleep in order to get up and feel energetic enough to do my workout. And also I need, you know, a good seven and a half, eight hours sleep every night in order to feel on top form. Then ultimately that one single choice of eating that piece of chocolate in the middle of the afternoon or in the evening 
is derailing me on the way to that goal of becoming super fit. And you might think, you know, those two things are perhaps not really that connected, but for me, they really, really are. Um, everything has a, a knock-on effect. It becomes a bit of a snowball. So what are the daily choices that you are making and what are the consequences that they're having? You know, this comes back again to be talked about the law of cause and effect and how we, you are always at cause in our lives and the effect um, in our lives is the result of, our, of the inputs of what we put in. So when you're looking at goals, okay, think about this is my big goal. Okay, what are the process goals that will lead me to that bigger goal? Break it down into smaller actions. And then you can focus on those daily things and doing those and not be overwhelmed by the gargantuan size of your goal. So for instance, for me, if I look at my goal of ultimately running a seven figure business, if I just hold that in mind, then I will become so overwhelmed and also so disheartened at where I am now compared to where that goal is that I can often end up doing nothing and making no movement towards it. Um, whereas if I say, okay, that is, that's the ultimate aim, right? What do I want to do? What do I know needs to happen? I need to make sales. Okay. So how do I go about making more sales in my business? I need to be more visible. Okay, so how do I just break it down into daily and weekly and monthly tasks that you know at the moment that you believe are going to lead you towards your goal. And then you can reassess, you know, with a goal of a seven figure business, the reassessment probably needs to come after six months, after 12 months. Okay, how am I doing? How much have I made? What's worked? What hasn't worked? Um, but those process goals give you specificity as well, because you can look at them and see, I've done this, and this is the consequence of having done this. Um, and actually, that's not the consequence I wanted. So I need to change this other uh, small thing that I'm doing. And it can be really small. Again, in the past, I worked with a personal trainer who, um, he really got me to, to do things in really step by step, in a step by step way, you know, one thing at a time. And he used to say to me, if you're not 90% confident that you can make this change, then we need to make it easier. And that the reason for that is because we need to build trust and confidence in ourselves as we go along this process of achieving our goals, that what we're doing is having the effect that we want and that we can achieve. I think sometimes when we set massive goals and also when we set a lot of goals all at the same time, and I'm talking to myself here, definitely, we're setting ourselves up for failure pretty much. Um, and perhaps we're even doing that on purpose because we're afraid of change. And so we, we know subconsciously, if I set myself this massive goal or loads and loads of goals, then I'm, I'm not going to achieve them. And so then I don't have to worry about change actually happening. And I can say, well, I tried and I set this goal and it didn't work. But when we break it down and say, okay, let me break this down into things that I'm 90% confident I can do then we kind of start to take the excuses away. And at the same time, we start to build up the trust and confidence in ourselves, in ourselves being able to achieve what we want to achieve. And also we build up trust and confidence that change is okay and we can handle it because it happens kind of gradually. It's a step-by-step, -step, a day-by-day -day process. Nobody turns around after setting a goal and a year later and just in one day their, their life transforms. It's a process, a gradual process. Um, so really key that we look at process goals and that we make sure that they're achievable goals as well in our world, in our life. Um, so, so far, let me just do a bit of a recap for myself as much as for yours. Um, we've looked at are our goals aligned with who we truly are and what we truly want, making sure they're intrinsically motivated. How do we want to feel on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, so you might have like four or five, maybe six feelings that you want to feel on a day-to-day -day basis. And are my goals aligned with that? Are they going to bring me to that feeling? Um, are they going to bring that feeling to me? Then we can look at process goals and what are the smaller things that I need to be doing on a week by week, a month by month, a day by day um, basis. And then also it's important to look at the process goals and whether those process goals are bringing you the feeling that you want. Now, so many of us set a goal that we, we expect to achieve and we expect to feel a certain way when we achieve that goal. And we disregard how we feel on the way to achieving that goal. 
Like it doesn't matter if I'm effing miserable on the way there, because I know when I achieve that goal, goal I'm going to be joyful, I'm going to be happy, and all is going to be well. Well, no, it just doesn't work like that. Not at all. We need to feel the way we want to feel on the way to achieving that goal. Firstly, because life is happening right now. It's not happening when we achieve that goal or if we achieve that goal. So why do you want to spend your life feeling miserable um, with the remote possibility that something out there in the future might make you feel happy? Um, and two, actually feeling the way we want to feel is going to motivate us and keep us going and moving towards our goals. So when we're feeling shitty, it's not really going to motivate us. We're far more likely to fall off the wagon if we're having to do things that we really, really hate in order to achieve the goal. So I would really say, yes, sometimes we have to do things that are a little bit hard. So when we're first starting an exercise regime, for instance, um, then it's tough. It, it's not an easy habit to build necessarily. Or when we're going for interviews, does anybody like interviews? maybe some weird people out there, maybe the ones that go on The Apprentice, but ultimately most of us don't like being in the position of being interviewed. Um, so there are things we have to do that aren't particularly joyful, but we can find ways to, to make ourselves feel the way we want to feel um, within those things. And we can also kind of persevere to begin with knowing that that feeling is going to come once we start to build that habit. So for instance, with interviews, if I go back to that one, you know, the first couple are really awkward and then you get into the flow and you know what your, um, your stories are, you know what your skills are, you know what your examples are. And also you can change the way you think about things like that and think, actually, I'm interviewing them as much as they're interviewing me. And you can go in and go in with the attitude of, I'm going to enjoy this. I'm going to find out more about this company. Is it a good fit for me? So it's really about mindset sometimes. And with exercise as well, sometimes the process of it can be really tough, but the feeling afterwards is so worth it. It's great. Um, and then the benefits that we start to see in our body can make us feel a certain way. So there is some benefit to doing it. Whereas if you if you're doing something, to get you to a goal that you really, really despise every single minute and nothing in the world can change that, then it's time to set a different goal because that goal is not going to make you happy when you achieve it if you're hating every minute of it along the, along the way. You have to make it your own and make it something that you're going to enjoy along the way. So talked about choices as well, how it's our daily choices that ultimately create the fabric of our lives. It's not these big gargantuan one-off changes that we, that we make, you know, once every year. Um, and then a couple of different ways to open yourselves up to setting goals and to maybe get rid of some of these fears and excuses that so many of us live with um, and use to, and, and kind of have to put up with kind of getting in the way of us achieving our goals one is so if you had one year left to live what would you prioritize and again this really links in with choices is you've got to prioritize your priorities so i wrote an article um a while ago now maybe a year ago maybe longer that was entitled you're not too busy it's just not a priority and it's a really, really powerful mindset shift to make is to think about whenever I tell someone, oh, I'm just too busy to do that. I'm just too busy to see you. I'm just too busy for blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> Actually, what you're saying is you're not a priority for me or this is not a priority for me. Something else is a priority. And when we think about it in that way, it, it kind of jolts us. It jolts us out of that, that way of being and that way of thinking. So what do you keep saying that you don't have time for? Or what goal are you thinking of setting that you, you already are thinking, I just haven't got time for this. I just haven't got time to make this happen. If that's what you're saying, it's really time to take a look at your life. Maybe track what you're spending your time on because what you're spending your time on will show you what you're prioritizing. Um, and, it, and it's just a really useful way of, of looking at, okay, I'm prioritizing other people's priorities over my own for a start i'm prioritizing staying comfy in my bed for an extra half an hour over 
getting up and going for a walk in the fresh air. I am prioritizing TV over X, Y, Z. I'm prioritizing um, running errands instead of working on my business. Um, whatever it might be for you, um, take a look at what you're prioritizing when it comes to your time. And you can also look at this from a money perspective as well. What am I spending my money on? Because so often we will say, I can't afford it. So maybe there's a goal you want to achieve and you know you need to work with somebody to help you achieve it and you find yourself saying, I can't afford it. How true actually is that? How true is it that you can't afford it? What are you spending your money on? When you need to find the money for something in life, do you find it? Probably yes is the answer to that. So look at your priorities, prioritize your priorities, your true priorities, the things that are going to lead you towards the life that you want to live rather than away from it. And also, if you get a bit stuck with that, think about, okay, if I did have one year left to live, I knew that was all the time I had left, what would I be doing? And it's, it's an interesting and an uncomfortable question to ask as well, because I know even for myself that things will come up and I'll think, yeah, but I can't afford to do that. I haven't got the money for that right now. I but at the same time, I know, yeah, but this brings me so much joy. This is where my joy lies. And if I had one year left to live, I would want it to be spent living in joy. Um, and so then once you've done that exercise, you can think about, so why does my time and my money become more precious? And I could prioritize things differently if I had one year left to live, left to live as opposed to the rest of my life. Every minute is as precious as the next, whether we have one year or whether we have 10 or whether we have 15 or 20, whatever it might be. Every single moment is a precious moment of life that we won't get to live again. So that's one question that I would like you to consider. And then another question um, for you is something to try and release some restrictions. So if you won today 100 million pounds or whatever your currency is, what would you do? What would you stop doing? What would you carry on doing? Interesting question. Somebody did recently win 100 million, uh, I think maybe 105 million in the UK um, in a lottery or the Euro lottery, and they didn't actually give up work. Um, they completed, they were a builder, I think, and they completed the jobs they had, and they didn't charge the clients for them. I mean, that, what a gift. Um, and so I wonder what restrictions it would release if you just get into that mindset of, okay, what, um, what would I do? What would I no longer do if I had basically all the money that I needed to live the life that I want to live? Um, unless you, you know, you're looking that you, you need billions in order to live the life that you want to live. Um, so yeah, something, an inquiry to make. And then once you've looked at that, I would just like you to look at, and again, I'm always talking to myself as much as you, what could you do even without winning that 100 million? What, um, how much of, of that restriction is actually your own mind made restriction as opposed to a money made restriction? Because sometimes we put these restrictions on us as excuses. I can't do that, I haven't got enough money. Was that true? Is it really true? Could you find the money? Could you start saving it now? Could you find someone who could help you figure out how to find that money? Um, could you do a really small version of what you want to do until you can do the big massive thing? Um, so what could you do? What would might be the smallest version of what you would like to do that you can do um, even without winning that 100 million? And then the last piece really that I wanna to share today is start ultimately we've got all of these goals you've got a plan it's really important to start start changing those process those those daily habits those choices start implementing those process goals start tracking it as well create an evidence journal if that's going to work for you and keep a log of i've made these changes and this is the result that i'm seeing in each of the areas of my life and yes we have to get deliberate about this and it takes time and it takes effort but we have to do things differently if we want to see different results. As Einstein you know, famously said in some, some words similar to these, you know, 
the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So if you want to see different results, you have to do things differently and you have to start um, and start from where you are. Sometimes I feel like we can get ourselves into a place of, I'll start when I'm a bit further along in my journey. So like say, you know, maybe your finances, I'll start looking at my finances and, and focusing on them when I've got a bit more money. Well, when will that be? You're basically saying, I'm not going to start because I'm waiting for the point at which will be a good point to start. But then you're just waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. So if you start right now, you're far more likely to get to that point and then get to the point of financial freedom, whatever it is that you want to create, than you are if you just wait. Um, so 2020, no more waiting would be another, another top tip from me. Um, and yeah, collecting evidence. Um, maybe you need to start working with somebody to, to help you um, achieve these goals in whatever area of life it is. Also keep the goals front and center and somewhere you can see them. So I think maybe I've mentioned this before, but have them on the fridge, um, have them on your phone, have them in your diary, have them somewhere or create a regular meeting with yourself each week that you're going to check in and say, okay, what were my goals? What have I done towards them? Where have I got off track? Where do I need to pull myself back on track? Um, and that's the best way to keep yourself moving towards your goals because if you wake up as I did in 2018 in September and find the notebook with all of those goals that you so lovingly created and you completely forgotten all about them then you've you've lost effectively eight months of the year to um because just because you didn't keep the goals front and center and you didn't then break those goals down into process goals and start doing things differently on a day-by-day -day basis so that is it. That's a wrap for these three videos. Um, and I hope that they've been valuable for you. I hope that it means you're going to go away and you're going to be able to plan your next year, your 2020. Um, yeah. Um, with, um, where with, with just greater awareness and giving yourself a, a better chance of succeeding in whatever it is that you want to succeed in. And so I am opening up an offer to work with me. Um, so this is an offer to work with me on a three month program, um, called clarity. And this can be career clarity or life clarity. Ultimately, um, what we will do together is we will have a, a kickoff session followed by six one-to-one -one sessions and a, and a closing session as well. We will look at every area of your life, if that's what you want to focus on and um, analyze where do you want to, to make changes? Um, where do you feel like you don't have clarity about what you want? Um, and because you don't know who you are, and we'll really dig into who are you? What are your values? What do you want from life? And how do you go about getting that? And the same with the career clarity, it's really about what do you want from your work, from your purpose? What is your purpose? If you're feeling like you're off track, like you wish that you just never had to go to work ever again. Um, you know there has to be more to life than this, but you just don't know what it is. Or maybe you're feeling a bit guilty because you have got everything that you thought you wanted and yet you're still not feeling fulfilled or happy. Maybe even people outside you are saying, you know, you're crazy. You've got this amazing job. Why would you want to give that up? But you just know that something else is what you're meant for in this lifetime, then the Career Clarity is the program for you. Um, so I'm offering anybody who signs up off the back of these webinars a £500 off working with me. Um, so if you, um, if you so desire, um, you can set up a, um, a Clarity call with me. I've put in the link in the chat. Um, you can set up a Clarity call with me. It's free, there's no obligation, and we will talk through where you're at, where you want to get to, and then we'll look at whether working together is going to be a good fit, and we will get started as soon as you are ready in January. Um, and that three months will set you up for not only um, a new trajectory in 2020, but also in the decade ahead. So 
it's something that is new for me as an offering and I'm really excited to be offering it kind of in this structured way and I would love you to join me so if you are feeling called then please do set up your um, your 60 minute clarity call with me and I'll be in touch um, to to give you some more details about how it was going to work and we will then speak and like I say see if we're a good fit for working together um, and then we'll take it from there and we'll get cracking in 2020. So if you are serious about living life differently in the next year, in the next decade, I think it's time that we had a chat. So all that being said, I wish you a wonderful, wonderful Christmas and new year if I don't speak to you before then. And I hope this webinar has been of value to you. And if you do want, if you're feeling called to work with me, then follow your instinct and um, yeah, set up your clarity call and uh, and we will get the ball rolling so that's everything from me i'll speak to you very very soon bye for now <laughs>